Hello everyone, Chris Fawcett from the Headache and Pain Management Centre here for your Wednesday afternoon. I'm back in the office uh, after being all around the place. It's good to be back uh, treating patients and getting my hands dirty again, uh, which is really good to, uh, for my patients to see. So, hey, today uh, we're a little bit late. Obviously it's uh, Wednesday instead of Tuesday and uh, a couple of people pulled me up on that. But today we're talking about vestibular migraine and uh, vestibular migraine is um, the causes and uh, what physio can do to help. So um, when it comes to vestibular migraine, it's an interesting condition because um, there's a lot of arguments about um, what the actual causes of vestibular migraine are and certainly because of the symptoms that you get. So uh, obviously there is some head pain that comes with it. Uh, it can be on the forehead and the eye, back of the head, up and over, behind the ear, um, on one side or both. But it's generally associated more with some dizziness, um, with the sort of feeling that you want to fall over, um, and a few other sort of really, uh, you know, vertigo, nausea uh, type symptoms. So it's really quite nasty and can be quite debilitating. Um, it stops you from driving. Um, it can stop you from doing all sorts of everyday functions. Um, it can last for um, hours or days at a time. And sometimes it can just spike you for a minute at a time uh, where you turn your head and all of a sudden you're kind of dizzy for you know, 10 to 15 seconds. But um, you know, when we've been treating these things here at the Headache and Pain Management Center, um, there seems to be a bit of a link um, between the neck and between um, how these happen, just like any other tension headache, migraine uh, condition. So um, what my thought is about this, the vestibular migraine, hi there Grace, nice to see you. Um, with vestibular migraine, what really hap what seems to happen with it is that, um, I like to use an analogy to try to explain how dizziness and um, vestibular migraines can happen. So when it comes to vestibular migraine, um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, watching tennis or cricket, uh, on the TV, so on the on the TV you've got your tennis or your cricket, and they've got what's called Hawkeye, which is like a ball tracking technology, which sort of shows uh, where the ball is in space. So for a line call or for an LBW or something like that, and the way that that works is basically you've got six cameras all around the court or all around the field, all having a look at the ball at the same time. And what happens is that those six cameras take uh, different shots of the ball. And those six cameras report back to a central computer to tell to within you know a millimetre or something like that, or even less than a millimetre, about exactly where the ball is in space. So it's able to you know tell the linesman if um, you know Roger Federer has hit it in or out or, or what have you. Um, our brains actually have the same system here uh, to keep us upright and balanced. Okay, so what we have instead of six cameras around the ground um, are two eyes, two ears, um, and our necks to keep us uh, sort of in line with where we are in space. Yes, absolutely, so with your eyes. So um, Grace just mentioned there with your eyes. So um, obviously you have some times there where if you're standing uh, still and you're standing on one foot and closing your eyes, you feel a bit wobbly because obviously you don't have your eyes aligning you to where you are in space. Um, there are obvious times when your ears can be in effect as well. So when you're on a boat and it's seasick, so all the fluid within your ears are kind of bouncing around and it's not really that comfortable, so you feel sick and nauseous. But when it comes to vestibular migraine, what happens is that um, certainly if your eyes are clear, um, and a lot of people that have vestibular migraines have at, or been diagnosed with vestibular migraine or basilar migraine as it's sometimes called, have actually had their vestibular systems checked uh, by physios in the past and they don't find anything wrong with the vestibular system. So obviously if the eyes are fine and the ears are fine, then the neck is the next thing to look at. Now, what's amazing about the top of the neck when it comes to uh, vestibular migraine business, hello there, I've just seen a couple more join. Type in underneath if you're there um, and say hello. I'm, I'm, I can't see exactly who you are, but uh, type in underneath. Um, when it comes to your neck, what happens is that you've got all of these muscles right at the top of your neck. And there's one muscle there called your inferior oblique muscle, which is really important. You've got one on each side and it has the most receptors of any muscle in the body that tells you where you are in space. And that's really important that those muscles are working properly and are reporting back really nicely to your brain because it tells you where you are in space. So if your eyes are fine and your ears are fine, but what's happening is that there's a muscle on top of your neck which is contracted, which is tight, and it's giving bad feedback into your brain about where you are in space, Effectively what happens, g'day Peter, good to see you too. What happens is that basically you have um, a situation like with Hawkeye where you've got you know, five cameras saying one thing and one camera saying another. So if it was on the tennis or the cricket, for example, you'd have a ball that's sort of landing there, 
and a ball that's landing sort of just next to it. So it's like a blurred little ball next to it. And this kind of ha what happens in the brain as well, where you've got your eyes and your ears all working properly. Um, you've got one pesky little muscle on one side, perhaps at the top of your neck, which isn't working or, or firing off nicely uh, to your brain and telling you the correct information. And it makes you feel woozy, it makes you feel dizzy, it makes you feel nauseous. And it's not until you get those neck joints moving, those neck muscles actually starting to uh, loosen up and free up uh, so it's moving more normally and reporting normally back to your brain that you start to become, uh, you, you become less dizzy, you become less nauseous. Um, we're looking, obviously we've seen this before in the clinic and it works a lot of the time, uh, especially when you've had everything else cleared by people like neurologists and uh, other vestibular physios too. So if you've got vestibular migraine, if you've got vestibular headache, uh, if you've got uh, basilar migraine and things of that nature, what happens is that uh, you get the uh, you, you get the, the vestibular migraine getting better if all of those things are all working together um, when you get your neck treated and getting your joints and muscles working. Uh, what do you mean by even if you were to watch it live, Grace? Just type in underneath there uh, what's happening. So with the Hawkeye are you describing there. So... Yeah, I'll just wait for Grace to answer there. But basically when it comes to vestibular migraine, when it comes to basilar migraine, uh, it's basically having your eyes, your ears and your neck all talking the same language so that your brain is getting uh, the correct input and the correct information. <laughs> live at a venue, yeah. So um, yeah, so if the cameras are watching it live, but one of the cameras isn't working all that well, it's reporting a different message back. So um, that's why at the, on the television, it looks different. Um, because you've got one ball here, one ball there. So if you're talking about that with a vestibular migraine, basically you're getting all the information coming into your eyes and your ears and it's all working normally, but then when you turn your neck or your head or you sort of get into a position with your neck, uh, if your muscles are giving you a different piece of information then you get dizzy or you get nauseous from there. So, so with vestibular headache, vestibular migraine, if you've had your ears and your eyes checked, uh, you've been to a neurologist and all the scans are clear, then the next thing to do is to get your neck checked uh, by someone who knows what they're doing when it comes to the top three joints of the neck. Hey, hope that was um, useful again today. I uh, love talking about different conditions of headache and migraine. Uh, if you want some more information about vestibular migraine, just type in uh, vestibular migraine in the comments below and we'll get back to you with a bit more information with that. Um, hope you're having a really good day uh, with your Wednesday. It's now two o'clock here in Brisbane, which means it's over the hump. We're on the way down to the weekend. Um, I'm just about to head to the gym and then come back, but uh, I hope everyone's having a good day and I uh, will talk to you next time, hopefully next Tuesday again to Belinda, uh, who I know watches the uh, feed every week. I'm sorry for not uh, broadcasting on the Tuesday like I did last week and every other week. Hi Tina, thanks Antonio for watching and uh, we will see everyone again next Tuesday. Thanks very much, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.